Good morning. This is White Raptor News Ministries. All praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit of Truth, the Living One. The authority, the one that moves all things in place. The all you can see, the all you cannot see. The all, the almighty. Praise be to the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. We're here at Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, David and Goliath. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Sokol, Sokho in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Demins between Saka and Azika. Sal and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Elah and drew up their battle lines in to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another, with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubics and a span. So a cubic is one and a half feet. So six cubics would be nine feet and a span is about eight inches. So... Uh, Goliath stood about nine feet, eight inches. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his leg, he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaved rod, a weaver's rod, and its iron pointed point weight 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you not come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistines said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Sal and all the Israelites were dismay and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons, and in Sal's time he was very old. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to war. The firstborn was Elab, the second was Ibnadab, and the third was Shema. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistines came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. You know, what's kind of out of sorts about this, why didn't the Philistines just invade Israel instead of challenging them? Kind of offset a little bit, huh? Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and those ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of the shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry, Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keepers of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. And he was talking with them. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? 
he comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. Oh, wow, what a bonus. No taxes. In a slave state of taxes, taxes even back then, taxes from the beginning. Are you realizing that this is a tax world, a slave state, this plane of existence for both Israel and the Gentile? Don't be fooled. David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the men who kills the Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David? Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of the Philistines. Your servants will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defiled the armies of the living God, the Lord Yahweh, God of Israel, 666 who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paws of the bear, who will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in this, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming close to David. He took David over and saw that he was little more than a boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said. I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into his hands, our hands. 
As the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him, reaching into his bag and taking out the stones. He slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with the sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine giant and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from his sheath. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with the shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. Their dead were strewn along the Shuramim road to Gath and Akron. When the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistines, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistine's head and brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistine's weapons into his own tent. As Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistines, he said to Abner, commander of the armies, Abner, whose son is that young man? Abner replied, As surely as you live, your majesty, I do not know. The king said, Find out whose son this man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul. And David still holding the Philistine's head, Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. Uh, I've always liked this story personally myself. But like I said, you know, I don't understand why they just didn't meet with one another instead of this gawking back and forth at one another. You know, if if Philistines were going to pursue Israelites, then they should have pursued Israelites. There it is right there. That is about nine feet, nine inches or about three meters is how tall Goliath was. Anyways, I'm going to cut out early. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. This is White Raptor News Ministries.